Well, congratulations, gentlemen, on an incredible film. Thank you so much for being part of the 2020 Newport Beach Film Festival Virtual Edition. I had the great pleasure of seeing the film in a theater at its world premiere at the Galway Film Flaw. And it was one of those moments uh, in watching the film going, this is the film that I want to have at our festival. And it's, it's been so rare for me that I, I go to a festival anymore that I have that experience. And I'm not just saying that because we're on the call today, but it was sincerely, I remember talking, I think, to one or both of you afterwards saying just how moved I was by the film. And so I want to start with what was the beginning for this film? How did you come to the idea that you wanted to put something together that was able to highlight uh, not only creativity, but a particular location in the world seems to bring forth that creativity? So for me, Comer grew from a previous film, a 2016 film, which was made to mark the centenary of uh, the Irish uprising of 1916 which was a celebration of place through the lens of Irish language poetry. And uh, this film, Comer, was an extension of that exploration of place and how lived experience can exhibit uh, what it is that forms some kind of an essence of place. And in Galway, for me, having lived in the city for 34 years, uh, creativity was at the centre of what made Galway tick. A then approached me and said, I want to make a film about the arts in Galway. Uh, and he described a moment when watching salmon fishermen off the bridge in Galway and how the light caught the line and the, the, the salmon leaping and said, there's something special about this place that, and this is the end result. It's been a great journey. <laughs> we'll never be able to capture the, the essence of Galway. But it was a challenge that uh, A took on well, again, stunning, stunning film. And uh, you know, Galway does play such a, obviously, a critical role. One, one of the things I noticed right off the bat was exquisite cinematography, both in, in a traditional form of, of camera work, but also extensive, but not overbearing and overdone drone work. Can you talk a little bit more about that process? Well, I think uh, the producer, Paddy, has worked a lot, uh, much more than I have, with Colm Hogan, the cinematographer on our film, Comer, A Galway Rhapsody. And I think... Um, you can't speak about Cullum's cinematography without mentioning his drone pilot, who is a young man who came from Ireland, from the Ukraine, Roman, Roman Bogovsky. He has great skill in manoeuvring drones above a wet, windy Galway city and getting the right angles quickly. And they work in tandem. Uh, they're like a piano forehands, the two of them, really and truly. I think... The, the key to this film was not to overuse drones because drones are like pints of Guinness in the high street in Galway now. They're all over the place. We used the drone sparingly. That, that, that's the key thing. There's a new drinking game now when watching um, in cinema that you have to take a drink every time you see a drone shot. So every drone shot had to be earned. Um, is this drone shot earned to serve the narrative or is it just beauty for beauty's sake? And I can hand on heart say that every drone shot uh, in the final cut and comer earned its keep. Wonderful. Again, it definitely noticed uh, in that, you know, at the Newport Beach Film Festival, we review a, a number of documentaries and a number of narratives. And obviously there, uh, there is some, sometimes the gratuitous use of drones, whereas I do feel that with your film, each shot was very specific and very impactful. So again, congratulations. Kind of coming back to the, the force of creativity. I mean, you've got several characters within the film that represent some of the different pillars of creativity. Uh, can you talk about the selection process and any interesting insights from those individuals along the way with that process? Well, the choice of artist was very much a collaborative thing. And Paddy, the producer, and I worked hard on that. And the final selection wasn't made until maybe four months before the film was completed. So we were filming the last few artists as we were about to edit the film. Um, I wanted certain aspects of creativity to be pointed up uh, in this project. And one of those was music and song, represented by Martin O'Connor, the accordion player, and by singer uh, Roisin Choige, the youngest artist uh, in the film. I also wanted to include performance, because I've come from a theatre background. I started my career as a nine-year-old boy actor. 
in County Kerry. So I wanted to, to reproduce that somehow. And uh, we chose to do that through Mockness and through the very talented and very fluent uh, words of Nolene Kavanagh, the artistic director of Mockness. After that, then, Mike McCormack seemed obvious because two of his books, Crow's Requiem from uh, 1998, I think, and uh, the most recent, Solar Bones from 2016 or 2017 or 18, said a lot about Galway. He managed to breathe life into the city through his words. So we decided we'd uh, invite Mike to come in. And also the visual artist who is um, from Connemara and who has a long tradition of painting, working from his home, uh, is still in Connemara. He's always painted in Connemara and uh, he brought his own distinctive paintbrush with him. Greg, casting is key in drama, but often it's doubly key in documentary, as you know. One of the key aspects to the casting was somebody, all the characters have an interior monologue and, and, and through the film. Uh, so they had to have that depth um, that could carry that kind of poetic commentary rather than a talking head. There's a small use of talking heads, but it's just as judicious, I guess, as the, the drone footage. So that rich inner life is what we we're after um, so that we can capture that through those interior monologues. Wonderfully done. We see so many documentaries and the topics are important and, and the insights are incredible. You know, your film really was able to stand out and we're so, again, proud to have it at the festival. One of the other areas that I was most intrigued with is, you know, I've had the great pleasure of coming out to the Flaw for the last several years. So I, I know Galway very well and it is a beautiful city and it is a city of creative individuals. Uh, obviously, from my perspective, not just in the, the film art. Were there things on this journey that you found intriguing or insightful that you didn't know beforehand about either Galway or the creative process. You know, those were some of the things I was most interested in from your perspectives. I suppose, for example, um, I, I have a lifelong love of poetry and um, I had known Rita Ann Higgins had a very interesting story to tell. And I also knew that she had a quest for the Irish language and the bilingual nature of Galway City. And I suppose what was intriguing for me was how her childhood and her teenage years have shaped who she is as a poet, uh, her relationship with her father, uh, her father's relationship with alcohol, her father's relationship with his native tongue, Irish, refusing to speak it uh, to his family once he moved into uh, Galway City from Connemara, the Irish speaking district nearby. And I think uh, her backstory as enunciated by herself through what Paddy mentioned, the inner thought process, was very illuminating on the artistic process and um, how that works for poet Rita Ann Higgins. Greg, this uh, film has often been termed a love letter to go away from its artistic community, but from myself and A's perspective, it's actually a love letter to artistic endeavor. And that's what my takeaway if I learned something from the film was that, you know, I am a filmmaker, I have a budget, I actually can make a living from it. And a lot of these people are struggling uh, more so now than ever to make ends meet as artists. And uh, it's just an homage to that way of life and the people who pursue that way of life often uh, against the odds. And it's, 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 it's a vocation, I guess. And that's really what I learned uh, in the process of making this film. Yes, I think we would concur with you that the festival experience is very much a calling. Do not go in it for the money, is what I tell many of my uh, students and younger colleagues. With that, as far as the film, what are some of your next steps? Are, are there other festivals that you're excited about? Is there is it currently streaming anywhere that others can see if they didn't have a chance to see it at the festival they want to tell some of their friends about? It's a little bit up in the air, Greg, because we were scheduled for a nationwide release here in Ireland in the merry month of March when we had galloping coronavirus in the country and because the uh, theatres are, are only at 20 percent now is not the time to release it but it will have a, a, a long and healthy life once we get back on our feet in terms of theatre theatrical release. Very good and then anything else are there any new projects that you're working on obviously the world is sort of shut down but are, are there other has this sparked any new endeavors or any new uh, ideas that you might want to be working on? I think a um, we have a new government as well, and there's new faces around the cabinet table. Um, and I think, A, we should screen Comer 
to the cabinet, the Irish government cabinet, to show them how um, artists live their lives and how much of a vacation it is and how much bloody support they should be getting. Yes, most certainly. I think that's uh, not just... That's our next screening. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can encourage our current and any future governments here to also uh, take a good hard look at that. There are certain politicians stateside on Capitol Hill and also in Kildare Street in the heart of Dublin City that I would not like to come within two metres of. I would like to socially distance them at least two miles from my person. So if we can do it that way, uh, yes, we will certainly have a, a screening for uh, the political classes. We'll, we'll work on that social distancing for you as well. I guess lastly, looking at it, are there any sort of final thoughts that you have on the journey the film has taken thus far? And again, what you hope people will walk away with in, in viewing the film and understanding you know, creativity and you know, sense of place? I hope that the film will take some of the romanticism and myth out of Galway, the city of the tribes, a hub of creativity, which it is in some respects and in others it is not. Uh, that it's, it's, some of it is an illusion and that those that devote their lives to their art live frugally and uh, sometimes produce their artistic works against all odds. And if that message goes across, well, then I think uh, the film will have been worth it because people take musicians, act actors, writers, poets, dancers for granted. And most artists have spent a lifetime honing their art and then presenting it to the public. And that is no small uh, achievement for any human being. Greg, I was delighted when you presented it and said you had an emotional response to it. That's the most surprising thing that I had at the, the various screenings. People actually got very emotionally involved in what is a, a, an arts documentary. And that is a, a rarity, but it's testament to the artists themselves. And, you know, maybe we're not great believers in deities, but maybe the arts is a deity and people stand in awe at how people can produce this work. Um, and that's the emotional response that I think Comer can bring out in people. Well, again, congratulations to both of you and to the entire team. We look forward to hopefully having you here in Newport Beach during better times for us and for the world. And we wish you the very, very best. Thank you both. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Newport Beach. Thank you, Greg.